Good afternoon, Year 3-4. So we are on to the next part of our topic, uh, where could your journey take you? So you've just finished your lessons all about um, circuits with Miss Dennis. We're now moving on to sound. So let's have a look. Before we do that, we're just going to have a quick recap of some of the things that you learned last week in your um, lesson about circuits. So thinking about these questions here, what is a conductor? What is an insulator? What makes a good conductor? And what makes a good insulator? So what you're going to do is you're going to pause the video now and have a go at answering those questions. OK, so pause the video and have a go answering from what you learned last week. OK, right on with today's lesson. So we're thinking about our sticky words first of all. So our words today linked to sound are the words vibration, travel and medium. So you may have heard of these words in other contexts, but what we're thinking about today is specifically what do these words mean when it comes to sound? So in a moment, I'm going to be playing a video clip. Um, and I want you to think about these questions here. So what is sound? How does sound travel? And what mediums can um, sound travel through? So we're straight away looking at some of our um, sticky words here. So pause the video again before we get started um, with the clip. Make a note of these questions and then you'll be able to jot down any notes because that will help you with your tasks later. So pause the video here, make a note of these. Hello, I'm Greg Foot. And I'm Franska. And this is the House of Sound. Yeah! We're going to investigate the sounds of music. And find out how all different sorts of sounds are made. Sounds like these, this music. It's called Connect It, and it was written by a modern composer called Anna Meredith. So as you can see, we can all make musical sounds just by using our bodies. Yeah, and we can clap, obviously. Yeah! Yes, we can. Or we can sing! No, you can't. Or we can play musical instruments like a clarinet. But, first things first, what is sound? And how do we hear it? Well, pin back your ears as you're about to find out with this little film I made. So Greg is over there having a little bit of a snooze, but I think there's something I can do about that. Yeah, ha ha, very funny. OK, look, let's slow things down a bit and see exactly what was happening there. Sound is a type of energy made by vibrations. And vibration is the word we use to describe something that's shaking backwards and forwards really quickly. When any object vibrates, it causes the air around it to move. You can't see this happening because it's tiny things called molecules that are doing the vibrating. The molecules bump into each other, passing the vibrations through the air. This is called a sound wave. If your ears are close to the vibrations, then you hear them clearly. The further a sound wave travels, the weaker it gets. So because I was very close to Fran's gong, the vibrations were really strong and so the sound it made was loud. We can't actually see sound waves, but we can imagine what they look like. If I drop this pebble into this paddling pool of water, then you can see little rings of waves moving outwards over and over again, getting smaller until they run out of energy. And something else about sound waves is that big things vibrate slower than small things. Slow vibrations make a low musical note, whereas small things like this triangle vibrate more quickly and make a higher note. We call this pitch. So slow vibration means low pitch. Fast vibration means high pitch. Lovely. Um, I've seen enough of that gong. <laughs> Can you take it away? 
The thing is, sound waves can travel through anything that can vibrate, like air, or metal, or water. Sound travels faster through water than air, and even faster through metals like steel. What the sound travels through is called a medium. In fact, sound needs a medium to travel through, otherwise, there's no sound. Fran, did you know that because sound travels so well through water, whales can sing to each other across a distance of up to 800 kilometers? Whoa. That is so far. It's the distance between Scotland and Iceland, or the entire length of Italy. But look here, look at this demo that I've got that will prove that sound needs a medium to travel through. Okay. This is an experiment that was first carried out hundreds of years ago, made famous by this scientist, Robert Boyle. Mm, nice hair. It's good, isn't it? Believe it or not, in this big jar, there is an electric bell ringing, but we can't hear it because we've taken out almost all of the air out of the jar using this machine here called a vacuum pump. Now, it's called a vacuum pump because it pumps out the air to make a vacuum. And a vacuum is what we call a space where there is no air. And because there is no air for the sound waves to travel through, we can't hear the bell until I remove this pipe and let the air back in. So, that sound there, that, that's the air coming back in, but wait, wait. And there. Yeah. That's really cool, isn't it? And so this reminds me of, you know in those space movies where you hear those big explosions mm. going off and they sound a bit like this? Yep, I know them very well. That is not actually how they'd sound. Instead, they sound like this. What? Silent? Yep. Well, that's ruined some of my favourite films, hasn't it? Cheers. So sound needs a medium to travel through. And to be heard, sound waves need to reach some ears and a brain. OK, so I'm going to pause it there and come back to our slide. So you should now have an answer for these three questions. What is a sound? How does sound travel? And what mediums can sound travel through? Okay, so when we're thinking about sound, we're thinking about the vibrations of molecules around an object um, that's been struck or that has been banged or something like that. So that's what a sound is. It's the vibration of molecules around an object. So it travels in waves. Um, and the mediums it can travel through, air, which is why you can hear people speaking, can travel through metal, uh, which is why things like um, you, you can use the gong and it makes that loud sound. Um, and it can travel through water. OK, so all of those are what we call mediums. OK. So... We're then going to think about these questions here. So we're thinking about how do we hear sound and what happens inside the body to make us hear that sound. So we're now going to return back to the video and we're going to listen to the next part, which talks through what happens in the ear and how we actually hear those vibrations. OK, so having a few slight technical problems with the clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through how the ear works. So what happens, first of all, is the sound waves, the vibrations, travel in through the outer ear. So the outer ear is the part that you can see, the part that you can feel on the side of your head. That's known as the outer ear. The vibrations... If I just make this one a little bit bigger. The vibrations travel down the ear canal here. And then they hit this part here, which is called the eardrum. So if you look on this picture here where it's a little bit clearer, I'll make this one a bit bigger. Um, making this one a little bit bigger. So this part here is called the middle ear, just between um, the ear canal and what's known as the cochlea. So just in here, you have three special um, parts, OK? So you've got the um, malleus, which is this part here. You've got the incus, which is this part here, and the stapes, which is this part here. What happens is you don't need to worry too much about those terms, but there are three very small bones inside your ear. As the sound travels in and hits the eardrum, 
that then causes the eardrum to start to vibrate as well. That vibration then travels along the malleus, through into the um, incus, and then across into the stapes, which is often known as the stirrup because of the shape of it. That then vibrates or bangs against the cochlea. And this is a part of the inner ear. Those vibrations then travel um, through a fluid that's in here. So it causes the fluid in your cochlea to vibrate, which then takes it along to where you can see just up here, um, the nerve that then takes that up into the brain. So all of it works on vibrations, okay? So through here, makes all these different parts vibrate, and then that transfers the signal um, into your brain. So you've got some information here that can help you out. So if you need to pause it, read those bits, that's absolutely fine, okay? You don't need to worry about remembering all of the names, um, as long as you get the idea that you've got these different parts that work together in order to get that sound from outside into your brain. And that's what we that's what makes that sound. So how do we hear? I've just explained that to you there. So if you need to rewind it, pause it, anything like that, you can because I know that's a lot of information. And that's what's happening inside the body. So your middle ear and your inner ear are inside your body. OK. So what causes a good vibration? What you're going to do now is you're going to find objects around you. So somewhere around your house that might make a good sound. So not a musical instrument, because we already know that musical instruments instruments can make a good sound. But we're thinking about how other sounds um, can travel through the air. OK, so in a moment, you're going to pause this and I want you to try to find something um, that makes a loud sound, something that makes a quiet sound. Um, and I want you to find five different sounds altogether. So the loud and quiet, that's two of them. And then see what other things you can find that make a sound. So it could be, for example, you could find um, that you have a tub of pasta. If you shake a tub of pasta, that makes a sound. And that's the pasta is vibrating through the air, so the uh, medium is the air, um, and that makes a sound. So what other things can you find around you that can make a good sound? Okay, so you're gonna pause the video here and you're gonna find those objects. This, this um, slide will also be put onto your dojo to remind you of what you need to do. Okay, so now that you have your five um, different sounds, going to think about our tasks. So these are our two tasks that we're going to get done for this afternoon's learning. So you're going to upload clips that you take, so video clips of the different objects you find that make different sounds. So if you have found three tubs of pasta, they're not going to make different sounds. So I want you to make sure that they're three different, five different things that you've found and upload some clips um, of you showing those different sounds, okay? And it could be that you show things that are traveling through the medium of metal, through the medium of air. You could even try the medium of water and see if you can hear it through there, okay? Might be a bit trickier, but you might be able to. Your second task is to draw a diagram of how the sound travels um, and how the ear Here's that sound. So you've had lots of information today. I'm going to upload the clip for the, um, the video that we saw earlier, which will have all the information in. Um, and I'll also um, put some information about how the ear works. OK, but I want you to make sure that you are drawing and labeling a diagram to show how the sound travels and how the ear hears that sound. OK, so this is the end of the video. I'm going to be making sure that all those resources are available for you on your dojo. And I want you to have a go and I want you to show your teacher by um, uploading into your portfolios um, any work that you manage to do linked to the objects that you've found, 
and the diagrams that you've been able to draw about how sound travels. So good luck with that. And I shall um, be back next week with the next lesson all about sound. <laughs>